So how did you compose the tour itinerary? The, the tour is really meant to be the rise and fall of Hitler's Germany. So the idea is to take people through Berlin and uh, Germany, parts of Germany and also parts of Poland, to show where Hitler came from and what happened to him and, and what happened to the Germans and the, in the Second World War. So the idea is to start in Berlin when, and show the parts of uh, Berlin where Hitler was just starting off, the Olympic Stadium, these places where uh, he was seizing power, where the torchlight parade was, for example, and then move through as his career progresses and as the war progresses as well. So we then go, for example, to where the Wannsee Conference was held, and we go to Dresden to see where the bombing of Dresden was, and then off to Krakow where Hans Frank ran uh, this empire in Poland, but of course next to Krakow is Auschwitz, Auschwitz-Birkenau, where the tragedy of the Holocaust is writ large and we take visitors there as well, so it's a horrible place. And then of course we go up into uh, Gdansk in the north of Poland to Westerplatte where the first shots of the war were fired, and then weave down through Poland and we stop at the Wolfschanze, which was Hitler's headquarters, deep in the woods in the middle of East Prussia, it used to be East Prussia, and then the um, also the Wehrmacht headquarters, which is an amazing and very strange place. We end up in Warsaw, site of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, the Warsaw Uprising, and many other things besides where we meet some veterans and we talk and understand what happened in Poland during the war. Poland is, is in a sense representative of what happens on the Eastern Front generally, what happens further east, the destruction and the horror of that war. And then we end up the tour at, uh, at my house, which was a headquarters of uh, Herbert Gila, who was an SS officer and then a, uh, a Soviet uh, general who took over the house and later it was a Soviet hospital. So it's a very interesting all-round tour of Central Europe European history from the perspective of what happened to Hitler from the beginning to the end of the Third Reich. Is there a point on the tour on which it really pivots, where it really, really get, becomes profound? I think the moment that you move from this y younger, earlier days of Hitler and then you move into Poland and to a place like Auschwitz-Birkenau where you see the consequences of the horror of the, of the Third Reich and what Hitler was developing, this is an extraordinary mo moment when you really start to contemplate how important this was that we defeated Hitler and the Third Reich, that the, the sort of monstrous things that were being done in the name of this dictatorship were such that we had to fight wherever we were fighting from, whether it was Japan, the Normandy beaches, or indeed in Central Europe itself. And what else about the tour besides the, the military sites and the history is going to be appealing to our travelers? Well, it's an extraordinary part of the world and, and, and very often people haven't been to that, those parts of Germany or certainly into Poland. And it's not only, of course, very important in terms of the Second World War, but it's culturally very rich and there are all sorts of nooks and crannies. The beautiful city of Krakow, extraordinarily beautifully rebuilt city of Gdansk, for example, and many other things in between which I think would be a surprise to visitors, how, how rich and, and interesting the cultural history is, which of course weaves into the history of the First World War and the Second World War in that part of the world. And on last year's tour, were there any really uh, profound moments, any real strong days or site visits that just really clicked with our, our group? Well, the first thing I have to say is that the group was amazing and the atmosphere amongst everybody was extraordinary. There was a tremendous energy. But I found that the, very, the final farewell dinner was very, very moving. As I said, it was at a house which had been the headquarters of first, of first the Nazis, then the Soviets, and now is in the middle of a free uh, Poland, which is now part of NATO and part of the European Union. So even in that small area, the microcosm of the history, the dramatic part of the history of that area, just came forth and it was a very moving moment, that last farewell dinner. Okay. All right, Anything else? I could mean that's oh. happy to... <laughs> I think this would be in Facebook. We're trying to get, like, we're going to condense it to, yeah. I think they're going to probably get 